morning everyone, my name is Erica. I am the nurse here at Finona Sassa Elementary and today I am going to talk to you about heat related illnesses, which is a big issue, especially here in Florida. Um, the three major types of heat related illnesses are heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Heat cramps are just painful muscle cramps or spasms that occur in the heat. Uh, heat exhaustion is a little bit more severe and that occurs with the loss of water and salt in the body um, and when the body is unable to cool itself. And heat stroke, which is the most severe form of heat illness, is the body's heat regulating system is overwhelmed and this is actually a medical emergency. The reason I'm speaking to you about this is uh, these types of illnesses affect the elderly our children and outside workers more than anyone else but children are much more affected because they adjust more slowly to changes in environmental heat they produce more heat with activity and they sweat less than adults do children do not tend to think to rest and they don't remember to drink enough fluids so we're going to talk about all three of these a little bit um, We'll start with the heat cramps. I've already said they are painful cramps. Uh, it's especially in your legs. Children tend to become flushed and have moist skin, and they can have a mild fever, usually less than 102 degrees, 102.5 degrees, excuse me. If this occurs, you would like to move your child to a cool place and rest. Remove any excess clothing and place cool cloths on the skin and fan the skin. You can give cool sports drinks containing salt and sugar, such as Gatorade. Stretch the cramped muscles and slowly and gently stretch. Did I? <laughs> the second one, heat exhaustion. This is quite common, especially here in Florida. The child usually has a fever over 102 degrees but less than 104. They have pale, moist skin. They may feel anxious and feel faint. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue, headache, weakness, and still muscle cramps with heat exhaustion. With heat exhaustion, you need to move your child again to a cool, dry place. They may have sports drinks, such as Gatorade. They may have water. If there is not any improvement in your child within an hour or they become worse, you need to call 911 or get them to the emergency room immediately. This would be going into heat stroke, which is our last heat related illness and the most severe. This is absolutely, absolutely a medical emergency. The child will have a fever over 104 degrees. They will still exhibit signs of nausea, vomiting, fatigue, headache. They will experience loss of appetite. They may have a rapid heart rate. Their skin will become warm and dry without sweating. They will be agitated and this can lead to seizures. Again, you need to move the child first to a cool place to rest. Then you need to call 911. While you're waiting for 911, remove their excess clothing and drench the skin with cool water. Fan the skin. You can place ice bags underneath the armpits or on the groin areas. You can offer cool fluids if and only if your child is alert and able to drink. Now all this being said, let's talk about ways we can prevent this so it doesn't come to any of these things. You want your children to obviously enjoy the outdoor activities, but they should do it in cooler times, like early morning or late evening. You need to teach them to seek shade as much as possible, to keep hydrated. Always choose light colored clothing and loose fitting clothing. And again, schedule frequent water breaks. I hope this information helps you through our heated summer. And I hope everyone enjoys their summer, and I look forward to seeing you all again next year.